the stages of a star's life cycle. At the beginning, the clouds of dust and hydrogen gas are pulled together by gravitational attraction to form a protostar. Now, the temperature of the protostar increases as more and more gas and dust is pulled inwards until the temperature and pressure is so high that fusion can start in the core of the protostar and that's when the star is born and at that point the gravitational inwards pull is balanced by the the outwards radiation and energy and pressure that's created from the fusion reactions in the core when a star is in this stable period it's called it's in its main sequence main sequence now, a main sequence will last for billions of years, and the star will be fusing hydrogen gas as its fuel into helium. Now, eventually, the star will run out of hydrogen gas. And when that happens, we have two possible choices. If the star is about the same size as our sun, this is the path it will take. But if it's a lot bigger, then we have this other alternative path. So let's consider a star which is about the same size as our sun. So when it runs out of hydrogen, it'll start to swell in size and become a lot redder in color. And what it's trying to do here is it's trying to fuse helium into carbon. Now this phase can last thousands of years or, or a, nearly a billion years. So it varies depending on the, the size of the of the star but this is called a red giant to give you an idea our Sun will eventually run out of hydrogen start to try and fuse helium and it will grow in size it will engulf mercury it'll engulf Venus and it may even uh, reach as far out as Earth certainly um, life on Earth will uh, not be possible at that at that point but that's a few billion years away when the star has used up all of the helium then it throws off its outer layers and what's left is just the core a white hot core of of material that's a sort of dying ember of the star there's no fusion going on in this this core it's called a white dwarf a white dwarf star so although it is a star there is no fusion actually happening in here and that will cool over billions and billions of years and eventually fade in color until it becomes a black dwarf now we haven't observed any black dwarfs because it takes such a long time for them to go from a white dwarf and to cool to become a lump of uh, of, of black what if the star is much bigger than the Sun well after the main sequence and the, the star has run out of hydrogen again it will start to, to try and fuse helium and it will expand and this will form a red supergiant a red supergiant now there will be several contractions and expansions as this star fuses heavier and heavier elements together not just helium into carbon but also perhaps carbon together to make the heavier elements up to iron and while it's doing that it's contracting in and out and eventually it runs out of any possible fuel that it can fuse and it will explode in a supernova in a supernova explosion there is actually a star which is uh, relatively close to the earth called Betelgeuse which is a red supergiant and it is nearing the end of its life it is in the, the the phase when it's starting to try and fuse other elements other than hydrogen together and it could be a, it could go supernova at any time now and uh, so it could be tomorrow or it could be in a hundred years we just don't know when it will become go a supernova and explode in a massive explosion it'll be as bright as the moon so watch out for that now 
the star, when it's exploded in a supernova, will leave behind a dense core of material. If the star is medium size, then it'll be a neutron star that's left behind, a neutron star. Again, this is not fusing. Fusion has stopped. This material is so dense, it's just made up of neutrons. If you had a, a very small teaspoon of this material, it would have the same mass as one of the biggest ocean-going liners on Earth. That's how dense that material is. But if the star is massive enough, then what's left over, this core, will have so much mass and so much gravitational pull that even light won't be able to escape from it. It'll be pulling everything into it. And this is called a black hole. So this is the life cycle of a star, and if it's the same size as the sun, then we go through a red giant, a white dwarf, and a black dwarf. If it is uh, bigger than, much bigger than the sun, red supergiant, supernova, and either a neutron star and a black hole.